Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another recap video. It is May 19th and we're here to recap what happened during the week. We had such a fantastic week, all sorts of fun new things, lots of great questions from you all. We're going to dive right in with what Dr. E uploaded to YouTube this week. All right, so here we are on my YouTube channel. Dr. E did so much work this week on the YouTube channel. Remember, we're here on the homepage. You can click on videos to see what has been uploaded this week. There's always the live tab. I go live every Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. You can click on playlists if you're looking for something specific and watch every video in that category. And then the community tab, let's not forget that. That's where you can go to find the post to ask your questions that will be answered in these recap videos. So this week, Dr. E uploaded a ton. Pro tips, how to miter corners. Such a good video, guys. Let me know what you think about those pro tips. Let me know if you love them. Should I keep them coming or are they, you know, kind of simple? And do you get those in the tutorials already? So just let me know, guys. Uh, how to resize 12 by 12 paper, eight and a half by 11. That is a great video. However, I do, that video is right here. However, I do talk about Photoshop. I use Photoshop for this. And I always encourage you guys to chime in and let us know if you do something different and um, you know how you use it and how you like it. So again, if you use something different, let us know. Inquiring minds want to know. Here's the how to miter corners video pro tips, mini album cube set right here. Uh, also right here, I talk about papers, what papers I use when printing digital collections. Uh, the travel journal set right over here, which is such a good one. Uh, Father's Day is right around the corner. Beer keg project, it's such a good one guys. This is again, the only, the silver lining here with having a brand new YouTube channel. All of these older projects are resurfacing. I have made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects throughout the years, guys. And they are, there's so many good ones, so many of them. So we're doing something for you guys uh, for, while we're uploading these videos. Whatever projects you see uploaded during that week will be on sale, all right? They'll be 50% off on sale, guys. So this, we didn't do it last week, so those will be on sale. The projects I'm going over right now, and then the new videos that are going up uh, next week, those will also be on sale, all right? So you'll have lots of sales going on. If you see something that Dr. E posted, you're like, God, I wish that was on sale. It's on sale. It's on sale, all right? Journal Jam videos are uh, being uploaded. Dr. E did January, February, March. Retro Thursday. Where is Retro Thursday? Oh my gosh, what did she put for Retro Thursday? Oh my goodness, this is a old project. This is a Father's Day project. I don't even remember this project. I have to watch this video myself. So there's the Retro Thursday. And um, then she did, there's Journal Gem, sorry, January, February, and March, all amazing journals, guys. Journal Gems are crosses between junk journals, mini albums, and planners, so amazing. Slider Folio Style One. This project is so good, and I'm so glad it's on sale for you guys. If you have not picked it up, you really need to. It's an excellent project. Another one of those, excuse me, quickie projects with a wow factor. Don't miss out on this one. The slider folio is amazing. I kind of screwed up Dr. E's lineup with Patty Katai's uh, vintage Rolodex because it's amazing. Uh, then Dr. E uploaded the Everyday Life albums. We have it in small, medium, and large, all fabulous projects. You don't want to miss out on these projects. They are so 
so good. When I tell you they're good, guys, they are good. Good, good, good. Again, they will be on sale. So this week's projects will be on sale next week along with all in the videos that Dr. E posts next week. All right. A couple of housekeeping things. Thank you all for subscribing to my channel and thank you all for uh, watching my videos and giving me that watch time that I need to grow my channel again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I wish I could thank you all personally, but I just want to say thank you guys so, so, so much. All right. When you buy something from my shop, make sure that you download your file. All right. Download your file. All you have to do is join the box.com folder. When you purchase something from me, you get an email with instructions on how to download, how to join. When I say download, I mean join the box folder. All right. You can download to your computer if you want, but that takes up a lot of space. You can join the box folder. It's a service that I pay for so that you all can have all of these projects that you purchase in box.com, but you have to join the folder. Okay. When you, when you join the folder in box.com, it's going to prompt you to, uh, open and open an account. It's free guys. You don't have to pay for anything. It's going to tell you, do you want to pay for an account? No, just pick the free one. You don't need anything outside of that. All right. Cause you are, when you join the folder, you are looking at my folder. I pay for the service. You get to look at it whenever you want, wherever you want, wherever you are, but just create an account. It is free. You get 10 gigs of storage on box.com, 10 gigs. All right. So think about that. If you have any questions about purchases, always email us info at paperphenomenon.com. We are here to help. And last thing, shipping. We thought we did a good thing by using Ground Advantage is a brand new service that USPS offers. And I don't know what's going on. It has not been an advantage. It has been a disadvantage. So we use USPS to pay for our labels. They calculate the shipping. We don't. We do not do it. But somehow when we use Ground Advantage, the postage has not been enough. And some of, of my customers have been getting a bill. So if you get a bill for your package, I'm sorry, just email me info at paperphenomenon.com. We will give you a refund for whatever that is. All right. Cause you paid for shipping. You should not have to pay for more shipping. So it's happened a few times already. So please feel free to email me. We will be happy to give you a refund. And I'm so, so sorry, but I don't know what we're doing wrong. I don't know if UP, USPS doesn't have it figured out yet on the ground advantage, but you should not have to pay additional shipping. Now, if it's a customs charge, that's different. Uh, but the ground advantage US orders, if you get a bill for you, a US order, a US order, that is something I will be happy to refund. So thank you, but no, thank you, USPS. We got to get it right. We got to get it right. So just wanted to, uh, draw attention to that because it's important videos that are coming up next week and that will also be on sale mr benjamin one and two mr grant and the remit and the mit and the mit the mr grant and and mix album i don't know what doctor is telling me there but i think i kind of oh the mix and match album I mixed and match the, the albums for one and two. So check it out, Mr. Benjamin and Mr. Grant. All right, those will be on sale and those videos will be going up to YouTube. The Outdoor Man, do you see a theme happening here with all of the Father's Day projects that I have made throughout the year? That's such a great album, such a great project. And I have the perfect paper collection in my shop for that one. It's called The Mountains. It The mo mountains are calling it's a fantastic paper collection for the Outdoor Man project. Monographs, another fantastic project. There's also 
So two monographs, let's see, two or three monographs videos will be posted. One that Jennifer Every did, love her project. She used to be uh, on the design on the design team uh, a while ago, so she made one of those. And my project is going up also on YouTube. Also, the one that I made for my sister, which is a military version, that one will also be posted. So look out for that video. Matting 102 envelope mini album tutorial. I think that's a freebie. I think that may be one of my freebies. Two of the remix projects, Journal Jam Projects Quarter 2 on the Envelope Mini Album Tutorial. So all of you fans of Envelope Mini Albums, those are being posted this week. So if I have a tutorial associated for any of these videos, those, uh, those will be on sale. All right. So we got lots of good questions this week. Let's get to the questions. All right. First question. From Jane Andrews, yes, it is the Jane. I really enjoy your videos where you shared your house plants and repotting. It inspired me to add live plants back to my home. You mentioned in that video that you would share your special recipe for the best soil, in my humble opinion. Can you share that? I have three or four plants that I need to repot. I will absolutely do that, Jane, in my garden channel this week but I will tell you what my secret ingredient is. It is pumice stone. You can get it on Amazon and I buy the 3 8 inch pumice stone. All right, on Amazon, but I will do a video in on my garden channel, Paper Phenomenon the Gardener. I will link you in the description box below to that channel if you're interested. And um, I will also link you to the pumice stone that I purchase. Thank you for the question, Jane. The next question is from Crafting with Ilona, I believe is how you spell it. Hi, darling, I know exactly who you are. Hi, Kathy, love your weekly recap videos. You mentioned you have a new designer. My question is, when do you expect the next paper collection, please? I love all your, all, all your collections. They are so much better than the big brand ones. Thank you, darling, you humble me. I love everything you do, thank you. P.S., just got the kitchen sink collection. I'm laughing out loud right now darling because that's the new one thank you so very much for extending the offer to 24 hours you are so welcome i should probably rephrase my question when is the next collection coming out yes because the kitchen sink is the brand new one so we're currently working on a summer collection it's coming up it's super duper cute and i just want to announce who is my new designer and I'm also looking for new designers, guys. So if you're interested in designing paper collections for Paper Phenomenon, please contact me at info at paperphenomenon.com. But my new designer is Salty Beach Scrapper. Do you guys remember Salty Beach Scrapper? I did a project with one of her paper collections a while back. It was a freebie project. Uh, she designed the Kitchen Sink Collection. Um, I am so indebted to Salty Beach Scrapper she has taken me, helped me so much because I was in such a pickle, as you all know, right? We're just going to call it the big pickle, right? I have been in such a pickle and she has helped me so, so much with getting things together and getting, getting things back to paper phenomenon. And she designed the kitchen sink collection and she did an amazing job on it. And I'm super proud of her and welcome her to the team and i'm so happy that she is uh on the design team with the paper collection so welcome to salty beach scrapper and if you don't follow her be sure you do we'll link you in the description box below as well so on to the next question there's so many more collections to come even that jeep collection baby even the jeep collection it's coming all right next question Next question is from Crafting with Becky. I'm going to have to start wearing my glasses to look at this. I'm working on the Twinkle Box. <laughs> Dr. E answered for me. I'm working on the Twinkle Box album. Was curious as to when the final review video will be up on YouTube. No rush as I have lots of other projects I can work on in the meantime. In July 2024, it'll be posted the Twinkle Box. 
Um, I love that you're working on one of my older projects. I can't wait to see your version of it. Be sure to post it on the Facebook community page. I would love to see it. The Twinkle Box is another goodie. My gosh, I forget about all these projects. Another goodie. And the albums are just so fabulous in these projects. So check it out. Uh, July 2024 is the... Uh, it's on the schedule for July 2024. Next question. From Yolanda. I love saying that. It reminds me of, I digress, Yolanda Vega from The Lottery. Have you guys seen her on television? She she was in New York. Uh, and When I was in New York, she used to call out the lotto numbers. And she used to say her name with such enthusiasm. When I hear the name Yolanda, I only hear... Yolanda Vega from the Lotto. All right. Anyway, back to the question. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't find my workspace now. All right. Question from Yolanda. Hi, Kathy. This is Yolanda again. Thanks for answering my question about the binding pockets last week. I think I started with you a year ago for the Design Options mini album. In those videos, the pages have half binding pockets on the back of them all. I didn't see a video where the pages were attached to a spine. Hmm. So I think that is where my confusion was. It helped to see you show an album last week. Well, I'm glad that that helped, darling. I bought and started the Picture Perfect album last week after it was reposted. Such a goodie, by the way. And it was, and that has... And that has the binding pockets, which makes sense. Does it depend on the album whether the free edge stays open like an extra pocket or gets sealed together? Yes. Also, that also looks like an amazing kit for the Global Scrapbook Day retreat in July. Thank you, darling. First of all, yes, it does matter on the project, whether the free edge stays open or not, 100%. Uh, all of my designs are different. Uh, they, there probably are no two alike, all right? So yes, it does matter. So you wanna follow the tutorial always, all right? The kit for the Crop at Home Global Events is amazing and so is the project. I'm not completely done with it yet. But I just want to show you one quick thing because it, re it relates to the binding pocket. All right, so workspace. So this is not finished yet, guys. But here, look at this, my friends. Look at this. Here, uh, there is no free edge pocket. All right, there it is bound. There it is bound, but there is no free edge. All right. The binding pocket in this case is a half pocket. So this would be an excellent project for you to make, which will show you a different take on the binding pocket without a free edge pocket. It's the, the top loading is the pocket. So the page design is completely different. So it, it varies from project to project to project. All right, so hopefully this helps. You will uh, get familiar with all of these things as you continue making paper phenomenon projects, you'll see, you will see. So hopefully I answered your questions and feel if you, um, the, the kits are sold out already for the global event, but you can still attend the event and pick up the digital version. You would print out your papers, get your cardstock, all that good stuff, and you can still attend and we will be making this project live. All right, so it'll be a lot of fun. The global events retreat in, uh, it's a crop at home retreat will be posted in the description box below for those of you who are interested. It's going to be so, so much fun, guys. All right. Next question. We've got, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but I don't want to butcher it. There it is. It says a second question. I've been trying to mull over in my little mind how to put two or three of the moving parts Moving parts folio pages together to make a two to three page album. It seems that maybe one of the folio AB pieces may need to be 12 by 12. 
to make the binding pocket. Do you mind talking through how to do that or is it possible at all? P.S. I love these weekly recaps. They're fun and so helpful. The answer is yes and yes. Check out your project folder. I show you how to do it. Those, by the time this goes up, those videos should be in there. All right, that's part of the bonus in the moving parts uh, workshop. Uh, if you picked up the National Scrapbook Day moving parts workshop, that is part of the bonus. Taking these layouts and retrofitting them to make mini, to make album pages, not mini albums, because these are 12 by 12, to make album pages, so check it out. So it's in the National Scrapbook Day Workshop. It is the bonus. If it's not in there, by the time this video, you watch this video, it will be in there because I'm posting it the same Sunday. All right, these go up on Sunday. I'm posting it on the same day. So check it out. The answer is yes, and I show you how. Step by step, I walk you through the process. Next question. From the Crafty Chateau, I tend to have a few sheets of paper and embellishments left over when I finish a project. What do you do with your leftover paper and embellishments when you finish a project? Oh, this is a fun one. Inserts. Inserts, inserts, and more inserts. Photo mats. That's what I do when I have leftover paper. If you notice, when I make inserts, I never break out a brand new paper pack. I use my leftovers. So check out all of the inserts I have in my shop. I have a ton and I, I'm, there's no exaggeration. All right, a ton. Next question. These have all been such great questions, guys. Thank you so very much for these questions. They, I'm, they help you, of course, but I hope they help so, so many others. So thank you for the questions keep them coming. The next one is from Ruthie. I have an Epson Sure Color P600. I have switched to a refillable ink system to make it more cost effective. I cannot find the Epson Premium presentation matte paper. Just watched your video on, pap on papers to use originally recorded in 2022. I thought I heard that you had switched over to Red River paper. What paper and finish do you use now? And thank you for your time to answer all of these questions and concerns. Ruthie, you're welcome. And thank you for asking them. So yes, I have switched over from the presentation matte paper. Yes. At one time, I was using Red River paper, which is an excellent paper. All right, a 60 pound paper from Red River. 60 pound is not my preferred weight. I wanted something thinner. My sweet spot is 54 pound. And the Epson paper is perfection, all right? The Epson paper comes in a 13 by 19. What I do with that paper when I buy it, because I still do, but I'm, I have something else for you guys. I take that 13 by 19 paper and I cut it down to 12 by 12 and I print my 12 by 12 sheets. The section that is left over is what I use for my white photo mats, all right? So when I don't have any more of that 13 by 19, uh, I guess it would be a cutoff or scrap, uh, that's when I use the 40 pound paper, the HP 40 pound paper that I show you guys in the photo mat video, all right? So one of the two is what I use for the photo mats. But the 13 by 19 Epson presentation matte paper, you can find on the Epson website and I only get it when it's on sale. So we will link you to that below so you have access to that. But as of late, I have been using this paper and let's go to my Amazon shop to show you. So here it is guys. This is the paper that I use right here uh, as of late. So it shows that I purchased it last December 2022 December 2022, but that's because uh, Jane has been ordering it for me, all right? But in my in my Amazon shop, that's when I purchased it last. Uh, I will tell you that it says only four in stock, but they always replenish. I also will tell you, uh, you see here, um, see this one's 53 pounds. It's, it's an excellent paperweight. I will also tell you that uh, I will share an affiliate code with you guys in the description box 
So if you're gonna order it to try it, please use my affiliate code that helps me a whole bunch. I truly appreciate it. And um, the price will go up as soon as you guys start ordering it, okay? Because it was even cheaper than what it is right now, okay? So it will go up. This paper is really good. It's very comparable to the Epson paper and it works great with my Canon and my Epson printer. All right. Next question. I hope that helps you, Ruthie. So the next question is from CJ Scrapper. I'm still confused about when to miter and when to snip and why. Thanks for all you do. Let's go over that, darling. I prepared something for you. So let's pretend we're making a page. This is the base. This is a flap. I'm gonna show you why we snip and when, when we snip and when we don't snip. That's also called, I call it snipping because I do not taper all the way, all right? So we've got this A piece. Well, let's call this B piece, right? It's a flap. I say we're gonna taper, but you're gonna give me a mini taper, right? A little snip, a little snip, all right? Why do I ask you to do a little snip? I'll tell you in a minute. So you snip when the layering piece is going to go end to end, okay? And why is that? Because when you mat, your mat is an eighth of an inch shorter, right? So you want to be able to cover that mechanism. Let's assume that this is an eighth of an inch. So when you snip right there, you cover up that mechanism, okay? From end to end. This one's a little bit longer than the base, so forgive me. Now, when you have a flap, and I don't, and I tell you there's no reason to snip, it's when the piece is shorter, okay? Because when you mat, it's gonna cover this entire mechanism, okay? If you don't snip, right? Let's say this is the flap up here. Let's say if you don't snip, when you mat, I should have brought it up way closer. You see the flap there? When you snip, little snipperoo, when you mat, you get rid of that little corner. See that? No corner. Okay, that's when to snip or not to snip. You snip when the larian piece goes from end to end, snip or taper. I call it a mini taper, okay? Why do I not taper all the way? I'll tell you why. Because I'll show you when we, when we miter this pocket, okay? So with this pocket, this is a pocket. I'm gonna show you how to miter. You miter pockets, okay? How do you miter? You look for the intersecting score lines, all right? When you miter, you're cutting on the diagonal, all right? Right across the intersecting score line. You miter pockets or album covers, all right? But that's a whole different kind of miter, so we're not gonna go into that right now. So you look for the intersecting score lines, you position your scissors right across the X, and you snip, right there, all right? And the reason why you miter, I'm gonna show you to fold on your score lines to create your flaps like so. If you don't miter, then you would have this bulk right there. You see all this bulk here? So look at this, no bulk because they're not overlapping. Look at here, all this bulk. That's why you miter, all right? Now, let's miter this corner. So you reduce on the bulk. You do a mini taper to reduce on the bulk of all of these layering pieces. So this is also not a very good example because it goes from end to end. Usually when I do a layering pocket with a flap, my pocket is slightly shorter. All right, so let's layer this piece, right? So I did a full taper on here. Normally my pockets are shorter, right? because you need space. So if you did a full taper, look what happens there. You see that corner? When you do a snip, 
See, there's a little a mini taper. When you put your layering pocket, you see it's perfectly finished. You don't see this yucky, yucky gap. See that yucky, yucky gap? You don't see that. All right? So that's why we snip versus a full taper. All right? And if you put your pocket all the way close to the taper, when you close your flap, it creates bulk. You need space in between your layers in order for everything to work properly. Remember, we're going to add pattern paper to this, photo mats, all sorts of things. So spacing is key. So that is mitering. This, this, and that's why we taper slash or not taper and we do a mini snip as opposed to a taper. Hopefully this helps and this makes sense. That was such a great question. If you want more on this, I have a pro tips video that we will link in uh, mm, up in the screen. One of, one of the screen corners, you'll see it. It's pro tips mitering. It's a really quick video. So uh, you can watch that and that'll be a good refresher for you. Great, great question. Let's go on to the next one. So the next question is about P3 tape and it is from user uh, IU6Z, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what exactly is P3 tape and how is it used? P3 tape is a fabric based tape, okay? It has adhesive on the back and it replaces the paper hinge. I use it to make album covers, three-dimensional projects such as, you see, let me grab one. Such as this one right here. To construct this box, we used P3 tape. So it replaces the paper hinge. If you've made projects with me in the past, you will be familiar with a paper hinge. This replaces it. It is fabric based and it has the adhesive on it already. That is P3 tape. You can find it in my shop, paperphenomenon.com. I also will link you in the, in the description box on how I, how I make my album covers with it if you're interested. I have a masterclass video on how to make album covers with P3 tape. It comes to you in this large roll. It's one and a half inches and it is perfection, guys. So do you have to have it to make an album? Absolutely not. You can still use cardstock wrap or paper hinges. Do you have to have it to make a three dimensional project? One of my boxes, no, you can still use paper hinges. But over time we find better products that make our lives easier and that's what P3 tape is. It's better and it's more efficient. And you can find it at paperphenomenon.com. Thank you for the question. The next question is from Robin. Hi, Kathy. I have a couple of questions about your gorgeous paper collections. Thank you. First question is, do you ever offer some of your older collections in a printed version? I do. I have been quite the slacker though on um, restocking my shop, so I'm gonna get to that, all right? I will absolutely get to that and restock my older collections. I do not have a printer that is capable of printing digital collections in 12 by 12 format, which is what I like working with. Second question is, I was told that some of the ladies who do buy your digital collections take them to local printing companies to have them printed for them. I just wanted to double check that this is an option and is clarified and okay by you before I attempt to do so. And if possible, then do you know of a big box, maybe office supply company that can do something like this and what type of paper should I request the collection to be printed on? P.S. My first choice is to buy collections pre-printed since I am somewhat homebound at the present time. Robin. So yes, I am going to print my older collections. I will restock my shop. Uh, and yes, you can take them to like a U UPS store prints. Any local printing shop where you live will print these collections for you. And yes, you can have them printed. You can put them on a flash drive and take them to your local printer and you ask them to print on 12 by 12 paper. You would like a matte finish. 
Ideally, you want a 54 to 60 pound paper matte finish because they'll give you a satin or shiny finish. You don't want that, okay? So 54 pound to 60 pound matte finish. Any local print shop should be able to print these for you, okay? A FedEx Kinko's, a, U a UPS store. I'm trying to think of big ones. Um, I wouldn't go to like a Walgreens photo place. I would go to a local printing company. You have to have a local one. And the two I mentioned, I know for sure. All right. So yes, 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 and yes. I hope that helps. Thank you for the great question. So the next question is from R. Carter. Let's take a look. Good afternoon, Kathy. Thank you for all of your inspiration and the love of crafting. You are amazing. Thank you, darling. You had mentioned in your paper, ink, and printer video that it costs you about $12.99 to print one of your paper packs. Can you please go over your printer settings? For example, I have the same printer and it's costing me about $100 per pa uh, a paper. I guess a paper collection. So feel free. So I feel like I'm doing something wrong. My settings are on media st card stock, printer paper size 12 by 12 print, quality high. I love the printer, great quality. Hope you can help me. All right, Robin, this is a great question. And what I said in that video that over time, printing like, let's say, I think it was about 20 paper collections that we did they cost $12.99 per pack, okay? Now, when you are printing one collection, it's tricky because let's say this collection has a lot of red, a lot of yellow. You're gonna go through those inks and you have to replenish that. The red and the yellow, boom. The, the black, boom. So you will have to replace your ink. But if you're printing a lot like me, over time, and I think it was about six months, it was the the the, uh, the data that Jane collected is was that $12.99 a price. There is a there was a whole workup sheet on that. Now the settings that she has, it sounds about right with your settings, the cardstock. Um I don't think I pick cardstock, I think mine is just paper. Uh, but I'm going to check with Jane to see what her settings are because Jane prints them for me now. And it will be listed in the description box below, all right? It probably will not be there as soon as this video goes up because I have to check with Jane, but it will be in the description box below. So give it about 24 hours since the video is posted and then that information will be updated for you there, all right? But it is over time and you have to remember that I print a lot. If it's costing you $100, that is to replace your ink, all right? But what happens when you replace your ink? You're able to print again and again and again, all right? So you cannot say that it costs you $100 to print a collection if you still have ink cartridges in your bank, all right? So you have to think about that. And when you print, you never have to refill all of your ink cartridges, right? So what you're gonna have to do, unfortunately, is print like five collections, right? Five or six collections. Start with a fresh bank of ink, print five or six collections, and I know that's not in everybody's budget, but that's the way you're ultimately going to know how much ink it's costing by a, a greater amount of paper collections. I hope that makes sense. All right, let me know if you have any further questions. I'll be happy to answer it. So look in the description box below, but remember, give me 24 hours at least from the time this video is posted. All right, next question. So we have a second question from EUQIP. And the question is, what is the foil called that you use in the Lake Cafe Mini Stories Folio 2? Easy peasy. It is the Heidi Swap Mink Foil, all right? The link for the Heidi Swap Mink Foil will be in the description box below. Thank you for the question. The next question is from Amber, Amber's Corner. 
Will you be bringing back all the older paper collections? And if not, will you be putting some more out for us? I really needed the Pooh Bear collection. I waited because I did not think I would it would ever be removed. Do we uh, do we get a second chance? The answer to that, darling, is yes. There's only two paper collections I haven't been able to put back in my shop, and that's because those two paper collections, uh, it has been discussed that they are there are images that. Um, that I have to remove, that I have to remove, that they are clearly, clearly from another designer. So those paper collections need to be updated and the poop collection is one of them. It's that one and she sparkles. And once those are updated, they'll be back in the shop. So yes, you get a second chance, all right? Yes, 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 yes. And as I've explained to everybody in my previous videos, if there is ever any image in any of my paper collections because remember I hire designers to do this I don't do this myself and it is under contract that they buy the proper license for whatever they use I reimburse them of course for these licenses I pay for this service so there's no reason no reason for anyone to take anything that is not theirs right so but if there is ever anything in any of the collections on my website that you feel is an infringement on your art, please email me at info at paperphenomenon.com. I will be more than happy to correct it. All right. More than happy to correct it. So please. And thank you. All right. Next question. So the next question is from Marcina. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing mis, uh, that. Uh, this is a general question. Where do you print your paper? Easy peasy question. Thank you. Uh, I have my own personal white format printer and so does Jane. Jane Andrews is my assistant and Jane prints my paper. And I will link you down below to the printer that I use because it's a Canon... Pro 300 graph something. It's a, a long name and I don't want to screw it up. So it'll be linked in the description box below. Thank you for the question. Last question from Marta. Marta Feliciano. Uh, hi, Kathy. Here I am nagging you for a while. No worries, darling. I was wondering, do you have any projects folio slash album with rounded corners on the chipboard front and back covers. If not, can you consider making one? By the way, I totally forgot what you had said about the military theme project. Was it a project you've done in the past or was Dr. E going to upload one in one to the playlist? Total brain fog, girl, I feel you. I think you mentioned something like you made one for your sister. Did you share the project? I just want to to make one for my little bundle of joy for memory keeping. Thanks in advance. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> so Malta, I, for some reason, I remember doing this, but it might have been moons ago when I was on Ustream where I did rounded corners on an album. And all of those old Ustream classes are available in my CVM. But I can't pinpoint a project right off the top of my head. And again, it was moons ago, again, when I was on Ustream. So will I consider doing one in the future? Absolutely, so stay tuned. And if Dr. E remembers what project I did that has rounded corners, I guarantee you she'll post it in the, in the description box below. If she doesn't remember, then it won't be there. Because again, it was moons ago. And uh, the project that I did, yes, it was for my sister. Yes, there is a video. Yes, Dr. E's going to post it. And it was called Monographs. And that was, I did various styles. Also, one of my past design team members did a, her own version of it. It will be posted to YouTube this week. And so will the military version. It's a fantastic case and, and a memory keeping all in one. I really think you're going to love it. <coughs> Excuse me. So thank you so much for the question. All right, guys, that wraps it up for the question. That is your weekly recap. 
I want to remind you guys that I have the black card stock on pre-order at a super duper discounted price for the pre-order because uh, I'm going to place a big order. I'm out of stock, guys. And when I place a big order, I get a really nice discount. So it, however, it has to be on a pre-order so I can get that big number in there for that order. Uh, so place your orders, guys, for cardstock for the Black 80 Pound Maker Basics cardstock. Also, P3 tape and Maker Basics tape is in stock and shipping. And if you haven't tried it, please do so. I don't think you're going to regret it. And I want to thank you all, all of those of you who have placed orders for tape, the one roll orders. I love these orders. And I'm, and I'm going to tell I love all the orders, of course. But I love when I see the one roll orders because that means that you're giving my tape a try. So thank you so much for your order. And for those of you who ordered that first roll and have come back for more with the max order of eight that fits in that medium flat rate, that medium flat rate box, thank you so much. And I'm so happy that I brought an item to you guys that you love that much that you order that much tape. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yay for P3 tape, yay for Maker Basics tape. I'm super duper excited. So um, remember, lots of things on sale now. Thanks to Dr. E posting all these videos. Uh, all of the Father's Day projects are going up. Those will all be on sale. So many great projects. Don't forget about the Crop at Home Global Events Retreat. That is available. I can't wait to share this amazing project with you because it's another good one. New binding system, guys. New binding system. I'll see you this coming week. Do something you love, my friends. Bye-bye. Thank you for all the questions.